Good morning. For months now, readers and watchers of the Down to Earth workshop have asked me for a tour. And frankly, I've resisted. One of the reasons is because Highland Woodworking's newsletter, Wood News Online, has a great column every month called Show Us Your Shop. And there are some great shops in that column. But the other reason is, is because this shop was temporary. I knew I was only going to be in this house for a couple of years, so I didn't do anything too permanent. If you read my column this month, you know I just bought a house, and the garage that came with it will be converted into what I hope is going to be a permanent home for the down-to-earth woodworker. I'm looking forward to doing that job. I'm really excited about it. And I'm looking forward to incorporating some of the things I learned from being in a temporary setup. I'm also looking forward to avoiding some of the mistakes I made in a temporary setup. But I thought now might be a good time to give you a tour. Maybe for those of you who are in a temporary setup, you might pick up a couple of pointers. Others that are in a more permanent shop might give me some ideas. So let me give you the nickel tour. Let's take a look. A great place to start the tour would be here in the northwest corner of the uh, garage. This, as you can see, is the primary traffic area. The door to the outside with tons of junk hanging on the back of the door, none of which has anything to do with woodworking, and the door into the house. This, because it's a traffic area, also becomes sort of the dumping ground for stuff going out of the house and stuff coming in. For example, Pieces of firewood that make it halfway into the house and don't quite make it all the way. These metal cabinets, uh, store-bought, they're okay. Neither one of them have any woodworking stuff in them. There's automobile stuff, fluids, uh, windshield wiper fluid, things like that in this cabinet. This cabinet has cleaning supplies. Um, eh, I'd rather have it in the house, but so be it. Um, Lesson learned here, were I to do this over again, I would provide a degree of separation between the garage and the house by putting up a wall right along here, <coughs> cutting over to that door, and making a mini mudroom, another door into the shop. It would take a day to build it, maybe another day to put sheetrock on it and finish it. I would then build in cabinets over here for the household stuff that needs to be stored in the garage and I would move the only important thing in this garage into my shop that is the TV and the iPod speakers so this area even though it looks like I would give up some square footage by doing that I would actually gain square footage because this area is not used for anything in the shop anyway oh, other than my music and my uh, and my television for the background noise so, lesson learned here, provide a degree of separation, and I'll certainly be able to do that in my new shop. Okay, we're moving counterclockwise, and uh, this is the north wall. Down there was the corner we just looked at, and the uh, router table, my little uh, DeWalt uh, portable planer, and my mortising unit. All of these are built on uh, our, our shop built cabinets, uh, lots of drawers, uh, which is very handy to have. And everything in the drawers is pretty specific to the tool. So everything in those drawers is router related, everything in those drawers is mortising related. Uh, that's good stuff. Now, lesson learned here. As you will see going through, I have French cleats pretty much all the way around the entire shop. Uh, that's good. It allows you to pick up a cabinet and move it over to another space really easily. Uh, but it has some drawbacks as well. Um, it tends to make things impermanent rather than permanent. And as a result, you have a tendency to uh, sort of not put as much weight on it as possibly you could. Um, also, it kind of gets in the way if you did want to mount something permanently. The other thing is sometimes it's difficult to reach over parked tools to get into cabinets. Another lesson I learned was uh, in a 
sense of expediency, I grabbed some of these uh, prefab unfinished cabinets from the big box store. On the back of it, I put the uh, opposing French cleat so that I could just quickly hang them on the wall, move them if I needed to. These are okay, but uh, they're not too sturdy. They don't match anything in here, not that that really matters, but uh, they were quick and easy, or quick and dirty as they say. I think though in my new shop, I'll take the time to build purposely built cabinets. In other words, cabinets made for what I want to store inside. And you'll see in a minute, I have a uh, cabinet that I made for my uh, hand planes. And it's got clear plexiglass in the front, which is really nice because I can see exactly what's in the cabinets. Probably work that into whatever design I do in my new shop. This is the northeast corner of the shop, along, following along that same wall. I have a Bosch portable table saw. I don't use a table saw too much. Um, if you've read any of my articles, I tend to shy away from that. One of these days, maybe I'll break down and get a cabinet-style table saw, but I don't know. The type of work that I do doesn't really, uh, doesn't really require it all the time. I use my band saw a lot. I have a portable dust collector, an old uh, Delta bag unit. One of the things I want to do in a more permanent shop is I want to bump out a wall, build a room, and make that the dust collection room. Pipe everything in and out. Um, exchange the air so that there's uh, heat. the heated air is not being exhausted out of the shop. But to isolate the sound and to uh, give a little separation, make some extra space in the shop, I want to get a cyclone system and put it in there. Wire it up to, to uh, the current and put a switch inside the garage so I can just flip it on. Maybe use a remote control. I don't know. You'll see in a few minutes. I got a lot of remotes, so that'll just confuse me. Again, French cleats along here. You can't really see it, but I've got some lumber storage up above here, too. Um, the French cleats are nice, and again, you can quickly build racks. I've got clamp racks down here. I've got a little rack here for my vacuum cleaner accessories, and this little rack. Um, it has pegboard, it has a place to park my dust collection hose, a little shelf up here on the top, and I put a little small spring clamps and things like that there. That worked out pretty good. I'll probably keep that. I'm not sure uh, exactly where I'll put it. have to get a little deeper into the design of my new shop. But in a temporary shop, this worked out pretty good. Again, in a more permanent thing, <clears throat> the main thing I want to do is move the dust collector out of the garage get it more isolated from a sound and dust standpoint, and free up a little floor space. Okay, this is the uh, east wall, and uh, as you can see, just a continuation of the same clamp racks up there on the French cleats. I may do something a little different there for storage of my clamps. Bandsaw, drill press, and uh, what are well, let me stop here and make a point. I've got lights hanging all over my shop, and they're just plugged in to outlets. And uh, they all have uh, hang cord switches. I definitely want to get rid of that. I just love to wire it in, hard wire in lights, and have a couple of switches, maybe zone lighting or something like that. So that's definitely a change I'll make at a permanent shop as opposed to a temporary shop. The good news is, is all these are just hanging from um, eye hooks and chains. I can take them down and move them, and I don't have to repurchase them. Maybe I can figure out a way to hardwire them in and, and go from there. What I really want to show you, show you is in the uh, southwest corner, so let's go take a look over there. This is the uh, southwest corner of the shop, and what I call the alcove. It's a little bump out. I don't know why the garage was designed this way. Perhaps so they could call it a two and a half car garage. It's about three feet by eight feet. And uh, when I first came in here, knowing that this was going to be a temporary situation, I put a French cleat across, hung some um, 
things I had uh, used previously in other shops, two other shops in fact, and uh, did build one small bench and put some cabinets underneath that uh, can easily be moved back out. This became my sharpening area and nut and bolt storage. Basically anything that has to do with metal sort of stays over here. I clean blades over here. I sharpen tools, do that kind of stuff. This is okay. Worked out pretty good. But I got to thinking really how often I use this. I don't sharpen something every single day. And even if I did, does it really need to be in the shop? Would I have been better to put the sharpening station maybe in the basement? I can carry a couple of planes and a couple of chisels down to the basement pretty easy, sharpen them and come right back. And I could have picked up a lot of extra square footage for actual, actual woodworking. I have some ideas for the new shop, since it's going to be more permanent, on exactly how I might be able to remove the, sh the sharpening area and put it somewhere else and open up more square footage for the shop itself. So, I'll show you that later on in a future video. Uh, another thing that you might notice over here is this big old honking uh, roll around tool chest. Um, I don't work on cars. i uh, not very mechanically minded. I go into that cabinet maybe once a, every couple of months, maybe even three months, once every three months, to get a socket wrench or something. There's a lot of tools in it, but I don't really know why it's in my woodworking shop. And this becomes a really crowded, congested sort of corner over here that ultimately is, as a result, kind of dead space. So I want to do something different, maybe move that cabinet someplace else. I'm not sure it needs to be in the shop. Now, let's take a look at my biggest bugaboo in this shop, and I'll tell you how I hope to fix it in my next shop.